DJ Ferris. It's Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. Hit me. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up the. Let's get a sports talk. To some news outside the NBA. Super Bowl MVP quarterback Patrick Mahomes has signed the largest potential value contract in pro sports history with the Chiefs. A 10-year extension that our Adam Schefter reports could be worth over a half a billion dollars. That got us thinking. Perk, if there was one player in all of today's NBA that you would give a 10-year contract to, and you could only choose one guy, who would he be? Right now, today, I would take this guy right here, Luka Doncic. Let me tell you why. The Mavericks got a young stud. We talking about a guy that is, we talking about a guy right here that's averaging 28, 9, and 8, the rookie of the year. He's only 20 years old. He's been comp- He's been compared to LeBron James. He's been compared to Magic Johnson. And guess what? This is another Dirk Nowinski in the making for the Mavs. So if I'm the Mavs, guess what? I'm signing Luka for life. He's a professional. He won at the professional level overseas. And he's a young stud. And he will be a future MVP. He's box off. Um, yeah, you could get it to Luka. I say that because he already came in the league ready to go. When you play professionally overseas already, so you tell him made to be ready to play in the NBA. That's why he had a success so early because he was already brought up playing against older guys, playing professional already. So that made him already built for the NBA. And you get these type of contract, it's all about your health. Can you stay on the on the court? But he was already built. To play in this league. That's the advantage he had over a majority of the players. Because overseas, most of everyone that played professional already. And that's why he has a success right now. Yeah, you would get it to Luka. Because he is another Dirty Whiskey in the making. And they're going to continue building around him. He's a fan favorite. I'm going with Luka. Yo, the reality is the economics of this game. If you have a young stud and someone gives you the opportunity to sign him for 10 years, you do it regardless of who they are. Magic Johnson, once upon a time, signed a 25-year, $25 million deal. Everyone lost their mind. (laughs) And within three years, there are already people making more than him because the reality is the trajectory of this sport is going upwards. The salaries goes upwards. And when you get cost certainty today, you, you value that over cost certainty tomorrow. Here's the reality, though, or cause uncertainty tomorrow. Here's the reality, though. If you ask me to pick one guy, I'm going to pick the 25-year-old who's already an MVP and might be a two-time MVP by the end of this season. It's Giannis. This one's easy. I mean, everything that you talk about, Luca or John Moran or Zion or any of these other young guys, that's great. But I already know this guy's a real deal, and he hasn't even hit his prime yet. Yeah, and I'm sure people are saying, well, where is the name Zion Williamson? Yeah, Giannis also. You've seen the growth from him from the time that they drafted him. When he was just a scrawny kid <laughs> coming to the Bucks, And you see him progress every year, every year, every year. By 23, he didn't turn into a superstar. He didn't made the Bucks final contenders. Each year, because of his dynamic play on the court, he's a game changer. You put the basketball in his hand, it opens everything up around him. So it ain't no pressure on the other guys. They made their job much easier because what he does, his playmaking ability, how he to change Milwaukee in less what, less than five, six years. And now look at them, the best team in the NBA right now, potentially getting to the final this season because of his play. And I mean, I'm a humongous believer in Zion's future, but I think 
if you're for the sake of this discussion, we just. Only reason he's not in this discussion, everyone is scared of his size and his health. That's why it's going to be headed to get him that long deal. They got to see if he's going to be cons consistent on the court this season. You see, he missed the majority of this season and finally came back. Yeah, he had an impact for uh, the Pelicans, but they want to see how he's going to be. Before they even get him no tight, big deals, they want to see is he going to be healthy the upcoming years for him. Before they even think about getting him a tight, mega deal because they got to make sure that he's not going to get hurt at that time. But that's all. That's why he's not mentioned because everyone is going to be scared to get him that type of contract. They don't know how he's going to be. How his body going to be. That's the only reason he's not in this conversation. Because his, his health and everyone want to see first. So no, his health. He's already had a number of knee injuries. So I agree. I mean, I think Giannis is probably a safe bet. Also, Luca. You're not 100% sure on his conditioning, but hey, there's nothing guaranteed uh, in life in the next 10 years, if anything, uh, the world has taught us in the last few months. Um, moving on to the Knicks. Uh, former NBA agent Leon Rose enters his first offseason as the Knicks president. Mark Berman of the New York Post suggested that his, one of his former clients, Suns All-Star Devin Booker, has an intriguing possibility to eventually join the team. Uh, Rose has an extensive Rolodex of former All-Star clients, uh, guys like Joel Embiid, uh, Chris Paul, Carl Anthony Towns, Victor Oladipo, and even once represented LeBron before Rich Paul became his agent. I mean, while Booker is uh, specifically um, difficult, he'd be difficult to get. And I feel like, yeah, he already in a bad situation with Phoenix. He go to New York. They have a solid team, man. I feel like they do need an all-star in that lineup to potentially help the Knicks, potentially fight for a playoff spot. If they can land that book, I want to say how that's going to work out. Because they do have Barrett. They do have Randall. So, I just want to see how he, that's going to play out with them, with him in the lineup. Have an all star mission into that star five. I feel like that'd be a solid team if New York can land him. Because New York been trying to land these type of all stars for the upcoming years for a long time. And they haven't got anyone to, to come there. If they could get a chance to get Booker there and have an all star on their team, it might potentially change the Knicks. Because if he's under contract for four more years, are you intrigued by the idea of Rose recruiting for some of his former clients, including Booker, to the Knicks? I feel like we do this every year with the Knicks. Somehow, somebody employed at the Knicks <laughs> is the godfather's cousin's baby mama's sister brother of the person who plays for another team. And boy, we'd love to have him. Think about this. I'm not saying that Devin Booker is absolutely happy in Phoenix. Obviously, things haven't gone the way he'd like it to. But if he were to choose one location to go outside of Phoenix to leave, you tell me he's going to pick a team that's even worse? That he has an even worse track record? Why? Because his agent is running it? Why? He's rushing to go play with Frank Nilakina and Kevin Knox? Come on, man. The, the <laughs> only answer here, if he were to leave, and I'm not sure he's at that level yet, but if he were to leave, it's Minnesota. It's where his best friends are. Yeah. He would probably choose Minnesota over the Knicks because his two best friends are and Towns and, and Russell. That's what he would like to go, play beside them and create a team there. That big young big three up in Minnesota. That's what I'm saying. Like, he ain't going to choose another situation just like the same situation he have right now. He's not going to want to do that. Hey, listen, Leon Rose did something special last week, and guess what he did? Hired a guy by the name of World Wide West. They call him World Wide West for a reason. He has relationships with everyone. And I'm talking about everyone. If you want to talk about Jay-Z and Drake, this guy.
guy is powerful and he knows how to interact with people. I'm pretty sure that that's why they put him in place so that he could go out there. We know World Wide West is a is a mastermind when it comes to working his mouthpiece and, 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 and uh, swaying guys to come in his direction. That's why he was under Leon Rose in the agency. So I'm not knocking it. I think that with having World Wide West, that the Knicks could land Devin Booker. World Wide West could talk anybody out of anything. Great guy, but he got a hell of a mouthpiece on him. And that's why I believe in it. I would say to the Knicks, don't count on Leon Rose to bring former clients. Try to get him to pick guys like he picked his clients to bring out of the college ranks. That is where his impact is going to be. Don't count on him bringing them in. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube.